Hello and welcome to CurdCast, the podcast for people who like to eat cheese. I'm your host, Jen Mason, and with me today is my lovely, as always, in fall, spring, summer, or winter, Julie Faith Van Bosser. Hello, Julie. Hello. I work and, all colors. Uh, you are in front. Yeah, we're, we're kind of in, I'm in a coral, which is, I don't know, maybe summer, but, um, and we're still wearing, we're, we're, I'm, I'm coming to you from Sicily and I'm still in t-shirts. I still have, I still have arms showing because um, it's still warm here uh, and we'll be well into what you guys have winter. My family is all sending me pictures of snow covered peaneries out their window. Uh, and if you've never been here before, I know you have, Julie, but the rest of you have never been here before. Um, what we're doing today is eating through a box of cheese. Curd box, specifically, is the um, three cheeses and three pairings sent to your house every month. And it's all wraps around a different theme. And this month's theme is Fancy Fall. Uh, and we sort of picked this because it's... Um, I don't know, our fall box, our November box is always kind of homey and maybe a little herbal and it, you know, it feels very harvesty to me every time, no matter what our theme is, um, which I think is fall is like a great showcase for, for all things harvest, all things that grow and, uh, and they all go well with cheese. So that's our theme today. If you haven't, uh, got your own box well let me just tell you that you can get one at curdbox.com i'm gonna put that up here um and maybe i'm going to put it on here ta-da all right and uh julie so we're gonna start with our three cheeses and uh, and before we even get started what i'm gonna tell you and everybody else is listening is that all three of these cheeses are coming to us from the Forever Cheese Company, which is based in New York. But um, their cheeses come from Italy, Spain, Portugal, uh, Croatia, and specialty foods, not just cheese, uh, and Switzerland. And they've been doing this for over 25 years. And they are just a go-to place for both Curd Box and Curds & Co., which is our brick and mortar store in Brookline. Uh, so all of our cheese is coming from these guys. They travel around to meet their suppliers. They learn firsthand about the companies. They're not just, you know, looking in the catalog. For a catalog. second, I thought you said that they travel around and eat their suppliers. And I was they like, don't eat their suppliers, but they eat things given to them by suppliers. They're seeing how things are made. They're seeing how things are grown. They're seeing how the animals are kept. They're visiting their farms and production sites. Um, and they're just sort of, they've got a really high standard, which makes it really easy to um, adapt adopt their products into our lineup. And so all three of our cheeses, we're sort of featuring Forever Cheese today, um, but with three very different cheeses. So let's start with the uh, Repel, um, which is the, do you have yours labeled? Do you know which one's which? I, I did not you. label them. I only know what the rinds look like. Do you know what the rinds okay. look like? So it's not the one with chamomile. Um, okay. it and it's not red? the one with pimento. It's the okay. other one. Great. We're so that's the only with one that. with an inedible rind, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so this one is a sheep's milk cheese. So well, we've, we've talked about this before. When it's made with sheep's milk, it's going to be a little saltier, just the nature of the milk when it gets condensed and, and, and drier and drier, it gets saltier and saltier. Mm, it's so and good. This one is... It's from France and Spain. So it is um, made in French's Basque country and is aged in Spain's Basque country. It just sort of like goes down the road and gets aged for like six to eight months in Spain. It's really um, delicious. It's super brothy and salty mm -hmm. and really nice. And I've had it out of the fridge for a while. So it's yeah. got such a nice soft texture, even though it's a hard cheese. I yep. will say that I cut off the rind because I at mm -hmm. least knew that this was not an edible rind, but I thought it was interesting how much sort of, I don't know if you can tell, but how much like variegation mm -hmm. in color mm -hmm. there was in the rind, which was kind of, it was just really pretty. And I thought it looked yeah. pretty on the plate. Yeah. And this is, um, this is sort of based on or pays homage to another cheese called Osao Irati, which mm -hmm. is another um, really classic French Basque style cheese. Well loved. It sells very well in our store. Um, and, uh, and it's just, um, it's only made in, let me double check. Um, so the production is, is limited to December through July. They only make 200 
cases, which is mm-hmm. probably, I'm guessing, sometimes a case is just two wheels. Um, so there's not a lot of this available. And when it's yeah. gone, it's gone. You got to wait till next year. So um, it's, it's really like it feels fresh. It's not one of those cheeses mm-hmm. you get like tired of eating. It doesn't feel heavy, yep. but it does feel rich. And actually, it's it, for me, it fits right into that fall theme. Yeah. Because it has that kind of, this is going to sound so weird, but it has that kind of like fall umami. Like there's kind of a taste of the season yep. of fall. You know what I mean? I think mm-hmm. of like Thanksgiving and sort of like big dinners and like stuffing and this sort of fits yeah. in with that profile. It feels like um, the heartier, the cozier comfort food kind of, it falls in there and it's perfect. This box is going to get to everybody uh, just the week before Thanksgiving. It will still be mm-hmm. good for Thanksgiving if you want to share it with your Thanksgiving guests right. um, or if you want to eat it while you're making the turkey <laughs> or say, it's such an easy, like it. no cook meal, right. On like, mm-hmm. so that you have it like the day before or that morning. So you don't have to exactly. Make- so even the day before, like your refrigerator is filled with a giant Turkey and there's not a lot of room for anything else. You're like, you buy all the stuff for Thanksgiving. You're like, Oh God, what are we going to eat for dinner tonight? That's tomorrow. Like we have no room. We have no food. I have, you know, this cheese dinner is perfect for that. Or save it for the day after Thanksgiving and eat it with your turkey leftovers. Fun either way. Um, Also, if you have people visiting from out of town, it's fun to just have that to be able to go out and not have to think about anything. So this is a nice timing box. So it doesn't always time this way, but it is good, well-timed this time. Um, Let's see. And so then let's go to our pimento uh, cheese, um, which is the Alicios. Alicios. Um, and this is Spanish. So you can eat um, this wine, right? That was my guess. So you can eat it, but it's you don't have to. This is like one of those. It, it, the pimento is not is there for um, uh, more to keep it f- safe, safe, fresh, whatever, and not necessarily added for flavor. But it does right. give you a aroma, which which does still affect flavor. Like when you're so eating, try it, it both smells, ways is what I hear you saying. Sure. Yeah. 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 Definitely. It's edible. You just you may or may not want to eat it depending on what you like. There you go. Mm. Hmm. I mean, so, it tastes good to me. Yeah. So this one is named um, uh, Alicios, A-L-I-S-I-O-S, is named mm-hmm. after the trade winds that sort of blow through the Spanish island of Fuerte Ventura. And uh, I think I just said that with an Italian accent. I'm really sorry. It's uh, the, the second largest Canary Island, which is interesting. In Sicily, we have uh, we have winds that blow from Africa called the Scirocco. And boy, do they cover us in, in dust and sand here, which, you know, it's not like right next door. Just amazing how much these winds can pick up and carry things. Um, let's see. So this comes from the Spanish town of Muric, Muric, Marisa. And um, and sometimes people take this cheese and other leftover cheeses and use this, um, which you probably could do with all three cheeses in this box if there was any leftover, um, and combine it with garlic and olive oil um, and some spices, and you, you heat it up and make a traditional cheese is, that's sort of leftover spread. So I I feel like this cheese has a kind of briny olivey mm-hmm. feeling to it in some way, which is so interesting. It's definitely. This feels like, and I will say, by the way, I didn't notice a huge taste difference between when I ate it with the rind and without. I really Mm -hmm. only noticed a texture difference because obviously Mm -hmm. the rind has a little heft to it there, but totally edible. It's not like eating a piece of wax. It's not a wax rind. But this cheese is like, it's one of those things that I would pick up and be like, oh, this is unusual. Like it doesn't taste like what you're expecting. It just looks like an unsuspecting, like regular hard cheese. And then all of a sudden you put it in your mouth and it has that kind of briny olive mm-hmm. thing. So interesting. You know why? I really like it. Why? It is because this is a cow and goat mixed cheese. So it's got both cow milk and goat's milk. And the cow's milk is going to give you that, I'm sorry, the goat's milk is going to give you that tangier or lemonier yeah, or acidic. So or it's leading you towards that brininess. Um, it's brightening up. So if you just had this made with cow's milk, it would be lovely and mellow and creamy and but when you add the, it's like adding a little squeeze of lemon onto a dish at the very end or a little lemon zest it's adding that little push this is how, how do you can enjoy goat's milk cheese in fall you know chef is great anytime but you know traditionally you're going to go for harder cheeses in the in the colder months yeah now so that's it i can't stop tasting the goat 
Yeah. Yep. It's definitely. So Excellent. So good. Okay. So then our third one is our pecorino uh, chamomilla, chamomilla, which is, uh, oh, sorry, chamomilla, Italian, exactly. And those are chamomile. So what would they make chamomile tea with? Um, and this cheese uh, is made by Paolo Ferbigoli, Ferbigoli. Um, and was inspired by the memories of his grandmother um, who would put cheese in large pine boxes and then um, cover it with fresh uh, local chamomile, sort of uh, the saran wrap of her time. Um, it helps to preserve it, but it also adds uh, a subtle sort of floral scent to it. Now it's gonna be stronger when you're actually eating the flowers and different if you, you're on the inside piece. Um, you can eat and, this, right? Yes, yep. All right. Again, you may not want to, mm -hmm. but it's edible. Yes, just just like mm -hmm. having tea. Okay, I never thought I'd be the kind of person who said this. It has a kind of hay flavor, like mm -hmm. kind of like barnyardy sort of feeling to it. Is the best way I can think to describe it. Yep, you know, definitely like. Mm -hmm. Kind of um, it has. It's interesting because it's both tangy and musky at the same time. Mm -hmm. Such a weird and interesting combination. It's like yeah. I'm trying to put my finger on it. And this one's pretty young. This one is only two months old, um, as compared to the last one was three months, and the one before that is six to eight months old when it's mm -hmm. done and they ship it out. Um, and uh, and this one is made by it made in Italy. It's sheep's milk, so it's gonna it should be a little salty, and um. They only make this one. Let me see. I wrote the dates down here. It's only produced in May and June and then aged for two months. And then and then it goes out into the world. And again, when it's done, it's done. It's made it with the best grass of the year. So that is why. You, so our, our cheese tastes like what our animals are eating. Um, so if they're grazing in fields full of um, uh, clover and you know, a chive kind of, you know, different types of uh, herbs and stuff, you will literally taste that in the cheese when they're eating it, which is why some cheeses are only made when they're grazing in the summer in those fields. These guys are getting like that fresh green grass of May and June, and you're tasting it in the cheese, which is the coolest thing ever. Um, and I think very special. Um, this actually was winner of five World Cheese Awards, um, including the gold in 2018 and 2019. So a well-loved, well-awarded cheese. Um, so now that you've had all three cheeses, how would you how would you there, give like a three quick cheeses, description of them three? What I would say is for three cheeses with who without their rinds basically look the same. <laughs> yep three incredibly distinctive tastes like yeah. really and each one is very much strong so i would say like the first cheese i would call brothy the mm -hmm. second cheese i would call tart mm -hmm. and the third yep. cheese i would call musky perfect excellent well done now let's look at our um what we've paired this with so one we gave it um we're going to start with our oat cakes because we need the oat cakes uh, kind of to taste the other two. But um, so Highland Oat Cakes by Walkers. Walkers, the people that make shortbreads, the people that make the shortbread for the, well, the queen, but now the king for for the uh, um, the monarchy. They're out of uh, Scotland. And, um, and, you know, these were made in the Scottish Highlands. They have oat in them. The idea was that they would eat, you would eat them because the oat would be like a longer lasting, slow release of energy throughout the day. But um, I love a good oat cake with cheese, especially firmer like cheeses like this. Mm -hmm. It gives it some um, presence. It's good. It's it not a wimpy cracker. Yeah, it's not a cookie. It is I saw not a cookie. Walkers, and I was like, cookies. No, it's not a cookie. It's definitely <laughs> a cracker. But it's good. Yeah, excellent. Substantial. Yeah. So yeah, so it felt like that. We needed a hearty cookie that wasn't, or a hearty cookie. We needed a hearty cracker and um, uh, that would hold up to, you know, fall or fall box. And then what we wanted to do is pair it with sort of two different spreads. And the reason I went with two, and I know oh, way back in the spring, we did a jam box that was that had three jams in it. 
for people to better understand how different jams can be. Well, we did two here because one, they're great with these cheeses and this and this cracker, um, but also they're going to be good on your leftover turkey sandwiches. They're going to be good. They're just going to be good with what you're eating right now. Um, you know, you can glaze, you can, you know, warm some up and, and make a little glaze on top of some leftover turkey. You can just put it cold on the sandwich. You can put it on your toast, whatever, but it's, it's, these are some good, interesting fall friendly flavors. So once the first one is quince spread, um, and this is by Dalmatia, this, uh, is um quince is sort of like quintessential for um uh spain so membrillo paste is made out of quince but also um in other sort of mediterranean countries uh, quince is quince is here in sicily they make it in a in a mold they call it mostarda it's entirely different but they all are using this um this fruit uh and it's I don't know. I feel like it's the grown-up fancy version of a dried apricot. Kind of, mm. it's serving that sort of um, that fruit profile with cheeses. And it's yeah, great. it's really delicious. I have to say. So I heard or saw the word quince on the jar, and I went, "Uh oh," because <laughs> I it's not how in my mind quinces and oranges are sort of mixed together and I am not like a marmalade kind of person. So I was like, yeah. Oh no, I don't know if I'm going to like this, but not at all. Like just eating it now. It's very, very much, much more like an apricot. Like you said, exactly. Also, this jam itself is so beautifully textured. Mm -hmm. Like it's almost like it's made up of little chunks and balls. It's not like, yeah. it's just like pecked in and sugar. Like it's, it feels like you have the, like, it's really fruit based. You yeah. know what I mean? It's yeah. really delicious. Like you can count it as a fruit on your plate. It's not just oh, yeah. like a condiment. It's, it's, I mean, it's I don't think you really can, but I will put this I on can. ice cream. <laughs> I can see it on ice cream, on yogurt, exactly. like with meat, with, I mean, on it's your it's waffles in a, mm -hmm. yeah, in an oatmeal in the morning. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah. So let me see. What else do I want to tell you about this? So, so, so the quince has, um, mm -hmm. Funny, I actually bought a quince here in Sicily the other day accidentally because they call it something apple. It's it's a, gran, a grande apple or grande mela, I think. And uh, I wasn't sure what it is. And then we looked it up. We're like, oh, it's a quince. And I was going to serve it with some other fruit. And then I remembered that quince need to cook for a long time to be edible, yeah. um, which is why they're usually made into a paste or yeah. or um, or a jam or something. They're cooked. Quince and persimmon are confused in my mind, maybe. Is so persimmon, persimmon is this. I mean, they they come out at the same time. So you're not wrong in that mm -hmm. they're seasonally. Um, we have uh, in our new house that's. Uh, we're getting it has the giant persimmon tree and and it and those persimmons are somewhere between our two shirt colors um sure. and can get very ripe and almost come out of the fruit like a jam or a jelly but it's um it's it's a different it's a it's a much milder uh a persimmon to me has like a, a very mild mild apricot taste so it's sort of like for me a persimmon and then an apricot and then quince and sort of their um, depth of, of flavor um, it, all in fresh. Like if I'm com comparing semi-fresh, not like a dried um, fruit. So, so this gives us sort of a, a sweeter profile. And then we wanted to sort of um, play against that, our yin and yang for our fancy fall and do the uh, Peruvian pepper jam by Davina. Um, and this company is located in New York, but they are also getting their food just like uh, Dalmatia um, spreads. They're getting them from places like uh, Greece and Italy, Peru, South Africa, even the U.S. Ooh, um, that is spicy. Whoa. Sorry, I um, should have warned you that it is a pepper jam. So now here's the fun thing with a pepper jam and a cheese board. One, if you, you probably know this already, but a lot of people will eat milk dairy-based products when they're having something spicy. It's why we put uh, tzatziki, well, there's not really a lot of spicy in Greek, but um, why we would have raita with uh, Indian food and um, sour cream on Mexican food sometimes or a, or just queso, all those different things. The dairy product, actually, the fat in these dairy products will help 
to coat this. So you're pairing it with the thing that's going to manage your heat. Nice. Um, and these are made with uh, limo peppers and tart lime juice. Um, but it does have a little bit of a sweet piquillo in it as well. So it's not totally... <laughs> Sorry, I <laughs> one of those where you're like, got it in the back no, of your it's, throat. It, it's more like I took a much bigger bite than I should have. And I was thinking of like <laughs> a hot pepper jelly from like Stonewall Kitchen, mm. which is not really yeah, that yeah. hot. Do you yeah, know yeah, what I mean? yeah. Hot. Yes, this is hot. Um, and this would also be great to pull out for Thanksgiving um, with like cream cheese and, uh, and you know, with so cream cream cheese or some too. This is like a cold meat condiment that you want to have on oh, hand. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. But don't eat it giantly by the spoonful is what Julie has just taught us all. Thank you for doing I that for us. I sacrifice myself because I love <laughs> you guys so much. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but you can see how we've, it's sort of like we've got a sweet and a savory version of these, but they could both be combined with other things and, and have uh, entirely different roles. I think... Um, you know, this season of uh, roasted vegetables, like I could imagine some of these like warmed up and put on like some glazed, making some glazed squash, glazed roasted squash or glazed roasted sort of any root vegetable right now. Um, whipping up some, just some simple feta cheese or ricotta and putting this with that and make a lovely little dip or sandwich or simple mm -hmm. no cook lunch when, you know, you're coming in from out in the snow. So, so yeah, it's, uh, I, I, I'm hoping really that people will like this idea of, of finding new and interesting ways to use jam and besides a peanut butter and jelly, although that quince is actually good with a peanut butter and jelly or Trader Joe's Biscoff peanut mm -hmm. butter or mm -hmm. cookie butter is kind of a good thing, but don't let your kids fool you. It shouldn't really be eaten for lunch. It's a full out snack. <laughs> This is a full out dessert. But um, yeah, so um, I'm interested to know what you want to pair here. But uh, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd pair both of the jams together, but everything else, well, what did I, I say? Pair I mean, both of the jams you know, together. I actually think that would be really interesting because it's like sweet and spicy, sweet. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going it's with the pinto cheese. Yes. And some spice. Let's see how that goes. And if you were looking to add something fresh to this um, board, mm -hmm. I think this is definitely a good place to uh, to put on uh, some, I'd slice up some apples and I would just saute them a little bit, like big chunks, saute just a little bit so they, you don't have to worry about them turning brown. So they've got sort of a nice finish on the outside mm -hmm. that they can sit out for a little while. Um, otherwise toss them in some lemon or lime juice, but yeah. those would be really great with this as well. That sounds um, delicious. So, so I paired the first cheese seven. with the quince jam. Mm -hmm. And that was like perfection. Yeah. Now, That's salty. The pepper jelly all over this biscuit. And I'm trying to decide which cheese to plop on top. Mm. I mean, it's going to be a hard decision. Mix and match. So I'm going to try the pimento cheese first, but luckily there's enough okay. room on this giant biscuit. To have multiple tries, right? <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I <laughs> I love these this type of a biscuit or cookie. Mm -hmm. I, I really do encourage people to um, think outside. I mean, mm -hmm. Ritz crackers have their place in, in in the world, and I I know exactly when I want a Ritz cracker, or you know, but but beyond a table of water cracker or whatever, like experiment find something and and uh you know ask your cheesemonger or if you aren't going to a cheese store usually the the grocery stores these days have like a little cheese station and those mongers they're still mongers they don't get us asked a lot of questions so ask them like what's a really good cheese with this cracker um or even cookies using them as um a surface too are fun to do so i just went insane i combined oh, no. the cracker both jams okay and the tea cheese and it was Ooh. delicious nice so many different flavors nice. the musk of the cheese is mm -hmm. offset by like the hot pepper the hot is offset by the sweet the oat also gives you a nice mm -hmm. base for everything that just really gives it yeah. a beautiful feel in your mouth yeah <clears throat> they're all kind of hold their own in this box and, and you need that's what this box is kind of about they're all hearty 
we've brought a lot of Hardy to the table, but mm -hmm. without them overpowering, without them fighting, you know, it's um, mm -hmm. it's fall without any pumpkin together. spice. You're welcome. There's enough places you can get your all your other things in pumpkin spice flavor, but uh, oh man, and I bet you there's a pumpkin spice cheese out there, but I will never ever put it in this box. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, so I'm glad you enjoyed those, Julie, for um, people okay. to find out more about you. They can go to What Julie Ate. But um, if you want to find out more about the fabulous Forever Cheese Company, you can go to at Forever Cheese Co. Um, and then for Walkers, you're looking for at Walkers Shortbread US. Um, and then you can talk to or go to at Dalmatia underscore spreads for more about quince and all the other beautiful flavors. And we've had their stuff in our box many times, all different flavors. They're a good go-to. Um, they're a company you can trust uh, any of their products. Um, and also uh, at Eat Davina for more about our makers of the Peruvian pepper jam. Again, We've never tried a product we haven't liked from them. So even if we, it's not on our list, and if you want to see what we've done in the past, you can go on to curdbox.com and look at our past boxes. And you can fully browse all of the other kinds of themes and pairings we've had. Print one up that sounds good and see if, you're, if your cheesemonger doesn't have those cheeses, they know what they can pair with those. Um, we're super excited about it. this is our first cheese box where we've we've increased our cheese for the first time in five years where now you're getting three bigger pieces of cheese so you're getting a full pound um we heard you and um and it's in, and we were finally able to do that thanks to our really fantastic makers and our fulfillment team and all that good stuff. So super excited to roll into the holidays with you guys. And, um, and Julie, as always, it's always fun to feed you cheese. I like cheese. <laughs> Anyways, we'll talk to you guys next month. Go get your own curd box at curdbox.com and you can follow us at Curdbox on all the social media. Thanks so much. Bye, Julie. Enjoy your cheese.